shall we play a game? Okay, we've got really unflattering photos of ourselves. The photos of you and Josie are harsh and unflattering, but the price was right. So I guess we could use this as, uh, like... I know we have to get, like, a fake ID or a fake passport of sorts, so maybe we can use those photos for something. Can I, like, paste it? Put photos on license. Keep America beautiful. Don't leave your picture out in the open. I don't even have anything to... To paste it together, so I guess it's a bad idea. Let's look in the bush. Pluck! As you begin to pluck a leaf off the plant, a growly voice in the back of your mind stops you with a familiar, yet unfamiliar quote. This is gonna bug me all day if I can't think of what this is from. What what's from? How would you like it if someone came along and picked an apple off of you? Ah. Ah. What? <laughs> ah. 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 Two ah. ahs? Two ah. ahs. Right, we're off to see the wizard. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Potted plant. I don't think I can work. Uh, here's an air vent. Can we open it? Either the vent's up too high or you're too far down. Remove. The vent is securely mounted to the wall. Look at. The adjustable vent overhead is supposed to help control the rate of airflow, but since the air in the windowless building is merely recirculated, the vent really just controls the rate of infection. It's currently closed. And we can't open it. Affect some workers. They're kind of in my way anyway, so maybe I can get them out of my way at some point. Let's see, bulletin board. Read. To all tenants of 425 Second Avenue, from time to time during the year, we will be performing unannounced fire drills in order to perform routine testing and maintenance on the emergency equipment. There's no need to leave the building during these fire drills. Thank you. Menu. Woohoo! 31 flavors of ice cream. Look. They have banana bagel. I mm. like chocolate. Really? I wouldn't have guessed. Hey, they got chocolate sundae paper, jockey shortcake. Just chocolate and butterfat. Let's get some. You'll get your treat later. Promise. You make me sound like a puppy. Well. Let's see. <laughs> we can erase the calendar. Sorry, it's written in red ink. Good thought, though. Take. The calendar is thoroughly affixed to the to the cork board. Look at. One of the boards hangs a handy Fax and Kestroga wall calendar. In today's box, it says SK to Menuous Site, 7.30 p.m., GA number 1173. There's a line from this box to the following Tuesday's box, which has written the return flight information. So I guess that's when Mr. Kiskalon is going to the rainforest. That would be my guess. Talk to Yes. You. Let's see. Oh, hitting on her didn't work, so let's just introduce uh, my ourselves. My name is Jake Stonebender. This is my associate. We'd like to speak to Mr. Kiss Colon. I'm sorry, Mr. Kiss Colon cannot be disturbed. Let's see. He's expecting He's us. He's expecting us. He is. And the name? Oh, dear. Uh, Bond, James Bond. Let's see. What's up? Uh, we can't do Stonebender. Mr. Carpaccio. Just tell him Mr. Carpaccio is here to discuss an overdue loan payment. Mr. Carpaccio, is it? I thought your name was Stonebender. Damn That's it! That's my street name, honey. You go around telling people your name is Carpaccio, you make a lot of people very nervous. I can understand that. I try to stay away from raw meat myself. Well, Mr. Carpaccio, I'm afraid you'll need to go to accounts payable, 12th floor. This was a personal loan in the five-figure range. It was. Now, why would a man worth $20 million take out a tiny loan from a local thug? I'm not a thug. If you're not, you will be. I think not. Let's not play games. Then why am I here? Do you want the truth? If you think I can handle the truth. I am not going to let you in to see Mr. Kiskola. Damn it! Period. Do I make myself clear? Crystal. <sighs> Let's just yes. keep bugging her. Let's see. I don't want to insult her, but... Uh, my name is Jake Stonebender. I'm sorry, Mr. Kiss... Let's see, that didn't work. Um, Let's try this He's one more time. He's expecting us. He is. And the name? Let's see. 
No, I don't think he's, he's expecting the name Bond, James Bond, Stonebender, Jake Stonebender. Stonebender. Be honest. Jake Stonebender. The secretary glances perfunctionatorily and at the calendar behind her, not really needing to look at look at it to know Stone you're bluffing. Stonebender. Stonebender. Funny I don't have an appointment for a stonebender. Would you care to make one? We have something open for the 20th of next month. No, I'm afraid it needs to be today. That's out of the question. Mr. Kiskolan is leaving on a business trip late this afternoon and positively can't accept any walk-in appointments. Oh my god, look at all these responses. Let's see... Um, what if I told you I'm completely at a loss to continue my life until I speak with him? Uh, don't you know how it is? What if I begged? What if I told you he's about to be responsible for the extinction? Um, let's do what emergency. What if I told you it was an emergency? You're not a member of the immediate family, right? There's no good answer to that question, is there? She smiles knowingly and shakes because her head. Because, even if I lied to you about it, you'd know I was lying, wouldn't you? She closes her eyes and nods her head. How about... What this? if I told you he's about to be responsible for the extinction of a rare plant species of singular beauty and inestimable value? Every day's the day he becomes responsible for the extinction of a rare plant species. And they're all amazingly beautiful and of inestimable value. But we're talking chocolate here. Then I suggest you contact the chocolate companies and see if they care. I know I don't. I like butterscotch. I what figured you for butterscotch. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me. Alright, what if I begged? What if I begged? Out of the question. I'm very Didn't sorry. Didn't think so. You're not sorry at all. That's true, I'm afraid I'm not. And you're not really afraid either. No. What if I said, don't you know how it is? Oh, I know how it is. I'm as hip to the jive as any of you young people. Let me tell you something in your own language so that you understand. Sig... Mr. Kiskolan is one fly dude. I will not sit here and permit you to diss him. And he is way too fresh for you. So kick it to the curb, my man, what it is. Get it? Got it? <laughs> what it is. Good. She glowers at you, grinning superiorly and utterly convinced that she has just delivered a stunning put-down that should shake, your, shake you to the core of your being. Let's see... What if I told you I'm completely at a loss to continue with my life until I speak to him? The secretary rolls her eyes and flutters her eyelids in a spectacular display of impatience. Well, you'll just have to put your life on hold until the 20th. Shall I put you down, Mr... Rockefeller, was it? Stonebender, and you've already put me down. No, I haven't. Uh, does he ever come out? Does he ever come out of that office? She looks at you demur demurely. The elevators are right out that door and to your left. It was a simple question. He often comes out when he hears people abusing their coffee break privileges. Aha! The coffee guzzlers, guzzlers ignore the secretary's loud and obvious jab. So that is our goal. We need to... I mean, these people look like they're abusing their coffee break, so I need to get this vent open so he can hear them. Either the vent's up too high or you're too far down. Let's uh, use this to open this. Wielding the bamboo pole up, uh, pole like a punter, you're able to push the little lever and open the uh, louvers. Louvers. Why can't they just say open the vent? With the vent open, the, co the cacophony from the group on the coffee break is broad. <sighs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry guys, I just can't talk today. Miss Hasselblad, how long has this coffee break been going on? Only ah. about five minutes, sir. Oh, good. Then it's over. The employees, properly chastened, take their coffee and shuffle back how to their long offices. How really? Coming up on ten minutes. Write them up. Ooh, harsh. Let's see, maybe we can talk to him now, he's out of his office. Let's look at him. It's the man himself, Sigmund Kiskalone, president and CEO of Faxon Castoroga. He looks as if he crawled out of the wrong side of the womb. Let's talk to him. Sigmund looks at you yes. impatiently. We need to speak to you about your logging operations in Brazil. What about it? There's a grove of extremely rare trees on land that you're due to clear cut shortly. If you haven't already. And? Well, we were hoping to persuade you that these trees are worth saving. Why? 
You glance over at Josie. They produce cacao beans. Cacao trees are not endangered. These are? These aren't regular cacao trees. They're of an extremely rare variety. The vast majority of our cutting is domestic cedar. We do some cutting in Brazil, all of which is perfectly legal and authorized by the Brazilian government. I deal with... All we're talking about is... Let me finish. I deal with environmentalist every day, and I have made concessions to almost every such group extant. I will not now be bullied by the Chocolate Alliance. Thank you for my time. Uh, as, as you and Josie look on incredulously, Sigmund turns Ms. to his secretary. Hasselblad, these came to me by mistake. He hands some tickets to his secretary, spins on his heel, walks into his office, and shuts the door forcefully. Miss Hasselblad glances at the tickets and tacks them to the bulletin board behind her. With a smug smile aimed directly at you and Josie, she returns to his work. <laughs> I like how she just threw them up there behind her back. You reach for the tickets, but the secretary grabs your hand. Excuse me. Step away from the tickets. I, I was need them. Well, move along. There's nothing to see here. I'm going to save my game real quick. Okay, we need these tickets, so we need to get her away from her desk for just a couple minutes. Um, and now we have access to everything here, so let's see what we can do. Let's use the cooler. Use it for what? A doorstop? An armrest? Don't be so vague next time. Oh, fine. I just wanted a drink. Drink from. That's better. You glide effortlessly to the water cooler, get small cups of water for you and Josie, down them, crumple them up to disposable cups, and toss them in the wastebasket. That did nothing. Let's see. What's in the supply cabinet? You rifle through the goodies, but none of these office supplies are worth pilfering. Now the computer game company on the third floor, they have some stuff worth stealing. I bet. Okay, uh, let's look at the... Oh, we can turn on the burner. Let's start a fire! You switch the burner on, which begins to heat up the coffee. Um, I'm just going to leave it on and see if it like starts a f like a fire or something. Oh, here's a post-it. Let's read it. It says the same thing as every post-it taped to every coffee machine in the country. If you take the last cup of coffee, please turn off the burner to prevent scorching. Is it full? Oh, let's see. Let's look at it. Oh, there's still a couple cup. Oh, okay, let's take it. You pick up the coffee pot. And let's, uh, drink it. You tilt the pot back, and the sludge slowly moves towards your waiting lips. As it crawls inexplorably towards you, you can't help thinking about its probable taste, its probable temperature, and your table manners. You thrust the pot away just as the coffee sludge is about to touch your lips. Nah, let's throw it in the plant. Figuring that the coffee is better than not being... Figuring that bad coffee is better than not... I wanted to read that. Okay, um, let's see. Okay, I have, let's put this back on the burner. I think, is it still on? I don't remember. Burner switches, no, they're on. So hopefully that'll scorch. And, um, there we go. Mmm, the aroma of hot coffee drugs wa wafts by. Wafts. We can lie on the floor and wait. You and Josie stage a brief sit-in, but fail to attract enough media attention to pressure Fax and Cataroga to change their ways. Casaroga to change their ways. You both stand up. Humph, the smell of overcooked coffee fills your nostrils. Good. Maybe this lady will get up and go fix it. Go fix the coffee. Go. Fix it. Fix. The receptionist looks like she's sitting on one of the company's products. Phew, the stench of scorched coffee pot assails your senses. There we go. The burned coffee smell becomes overpowering as the coffee pot begins to smoke. The secretary, her lips pierced tightly enough to make the cords around her neck stega stand out, goes over to the coffee machine and shuts off the burner. Good. Look at this. Now I have to scrape the pot again. Flagrant disregard. Flagrant. Flagrant. She throws you a dirty look and walks off down the hallway with the smoking pot. Maybe we should rephrase that to avoid any misunderstanding. Well, I'm just gonna take this. Looking both ways to make sure that the delightful secretary isn't watching, you slyly take the tickets off the corkboard.